Hello everyone, this is The Question and I'm back with a slightly different video this time. This video is going to be showcasing all of the English releases of Jiro Taniguchi's manga work. So this video had been recommended uh, in my YouTube comments by someone uh, named Damon Pono and they had thought that they were interested in seeing all the different English releases that he had, that he had, had released and I at that point was about two volumes away from getting all of them so I now have all of Taniguchi's work. I am in no way a Taniguchi expert or historian. I just enjoy collecting and a lot of this information is accumulated on the internet just from collecting, looking for his work. So if there is anything in this video that is incorrect that you know, uh, please let me know in the comments. I would love to have that information if you know of anything that I don't know. Um, thankfully, the majority of his works that we've gotten in English have been from Punnett Mon. So if it wasn't for them, they are a publisher out of Europe. If it wasn't for them, we would not have gotten so much Taniguchi stuff because it was really only in the early like 90s, 80s that we actually got any releases from like Viz and CPM. So Panet Mon has kind of taken the Taniguchi uh, releasing and, uh, and, and putting that all out in English. And I think one of the reasons that we've gotten so much Taniguchi work in English is because unlike a lot of older uh, creators, he only he really only does a lot of one volume work. So a lot of works that can be released in one hardcover. He doesn't have a lot of these long running 40, 50, 100 volume series. So it's a lot less cost prohibitive for these pub for a publisher like Ponet Mon to release. Whereas if he had a 20 volume series, it would be very unlikely that they would be able to make their money back on it. Whereas a one volume series it's a lot easier for people to want to pick up so that that definitely helps out um, he released about 50 different series in Japan and we get we have gotten maybe a little less than half of those in English so not too bad um, he's extremely popular in France he was even knighted in France uh, in, tw in 2011 for his uh, you know for his contributions to the arts and so even more popular in France than he is or definitely more popular in France than he is in English or in the English world. Um, and his first manga work was released uh, in Japan in 1979. So if, if you enjoy this type of video, please let me know in the comments. I can definitely do more of this type of video. But uh, otherwise, let's get into the Taniguchi collection. Okay, so the format I'm going to do for this is I'm going to show off the book. I'm going to do them in order from the oldest that were released in Japan to the most recent. I'm going to mention who the writer and the artist is. A lot of, uh, especially older uh, Jiro Taniguchi books were writ had other writers besides him. And then later on, he kind of started doing more of where he did the writing and the art also. And just do a really quick synopsis of the story and then mention when they were released in English and by who. So starting off here, we have Hotel Harborview. This was released in Japan in 1986. This was written by Natsuo Sekikawa with art by Jiro Taniguchi. So the synopsis for this one, it is two stories. So two linked stories, both revolving around a deadly female assassin. In Hotel Harborview, the first story, a Japanese expatriate in Hong Kong spends his time drinking whiskey, photographing a high-class prostitute, and waiting for death at the hands of the assassin he knows is coming for him. In the second story, Brief Encounter, a notorious Parisian assassin is himself marked for assassination, and his hunter is no stranger to him. So this was released in English by Viz as part of their Viz Spectrum line in 1990. This originally retailed for $9.95. This is probably the hardest to find of uh, Taniguchi's works currently. This one usually goes for in the $80 to $100 range. And um, there was three of these Viz Spectrum releases. This is the only Taniguchi one, but they all have this nice kind of cover to it, this nice kind of lined plastic. This is a very nice, just a really nice release. It's kind of more your standard American graphic novel size. And I'm not gonna go through too much of the artwork here just because it is um, you know, kind of a more adult story here with a lot of, you know, it's a noir story. And then we have an afterword by Fred Burke, who is an editor. And that is Hotel Harborview. Hey, 
And next up we have The Times of Bachin. So this is a series that was released in Japan between 1987 to 1996. And this is an adaptation of a 1906 Japanese novel by Natsume Soeski. And this manga is the fictionalized version of the life and times of that author during an era of great change in Japan from the traditional Edo period into the modern Meiji period. And this manga series, just like Hotel Harbor View, was written by Natsuo Sekikawa with art by Taniguchi. And this one is a little confusing because it's hard to get concrete info on this release on both. This was released by Panet Mon, who you'll see going forward, released a ton of the English works of Taniguchi. So this on their website and on Wikipedia has this listed as a 10 volume series in Japan. But on multiple other sites that I found, sometimes it listed as a five volume series, sometimes 10. But no matter what the total of Japanese volumes are, we only got the first four in English. So the series was not completely released in English. So here's the first volume. As you can see, even in these early works, you have, you know, you can definitely easily tell Taniguchi's artwork here. So this is volume one. And we have volume two. We have volume three. And volume four. And like it says on the back here, this is the fourth of 10 volumes. So that leads me to believe that there was supposed to be more, but they only released the first four. So I'm assuming either this didn't sell very well, um, you know, something must have happened, but they've only released the first four volumes and it's been years since they've released the fourth volume. So it's, I doubt we're gonna see more of this, but, uh, but we did get four volumes and this one is still pretty easy to find. Uh, these volumes are still for sale on the Punnett Mon website. You can still find these very easily on um, multiple booksellers. So this is a fairly easy to find series. Um, but one of the only ones that we've gotten that has multiple volumes that was not completed in English. So. Next up, we have Benkai in New York. This, is, this was released in Japan in between 1991 through 1996. This was story by Jinpachi Mori with art by Taniguchi. This is a noir short story collection about Benkai, a Japanese artist living in New York who's secretly working as a hitman in his spare time. So this was released in English by Viz in its pulp magazine in 2000 and then was released in the standard manga size volume in 2001. So this is a this is one of the, the harder to get ones too. Um, it doesn't go for that much. I mean, you can usually find this for 40 to $50, but it's hard because of the age, it's hard to get one of these in good condition. This is the second one I've ordered. And this, the first one was in really bad shape. This one here is in mediocre shape. You can see there's a little rip there. Um, but yeah, hard to get this in great, in great condition. And it actually says here, perfect collection. So I think this is part of their perfect collection of books. And yeah, so another noir story from Taniguchi. Next up, we have The Walking Man. And this is the first English release we get um, that, uh, that he does, that Taniguchi does the artwork and the story for. So this was released in Japan in 1992. And so the synopsis for this book, this is a book in which nothing happens, but everything occurs. The Walking Man follows a modern day Japanese businessman as he strolls at random through urban Japan, often silent, usually alone with his vivid dreams that let time stand still. Join him as he climbs a tree in bare feet, takes time out to observe the birds, plays in the puddles after the rains and returns a shell to the sea. So this was re first released in English by Panet Mon in 2006. And again, in this expanded edition, which I have in 2014, which contains three uh, extra stories and then 28 color pages, which were restored. And I think the original 20, 2006 release of this was not in the standard Japanese uh, right to left. It was uh, flipped. So this is a really nice, Panetmon released a lot of these Taniguchi works in these really nice hardcovers. This, this expanded edition is really nice. Um,
as you can see, not a lot of, here we got color pages, not a lot of words, uh, not a lot of word balloons. It is, um, you know, on the word, more on the wordless side. But yeah, we got a lot of color pages. Just a really nice release from Ponet Mon. And this expanded edition is fairly easy to get a hold of. It's still for sale on the Ponet Mon site. You still find this on Amazon and other sites like that. The earlier 2006 one is obviously out of print when this expanded edition came out. Um, they stopped selling the older version. So that one's a little harder to find, but this expanded edition has everything and more. So this is kind of the definitive version of that story. So that is The Walking Man. Okay, so next up we have Samurai Legend. As you can tell just from this early part, Taniguchi does a lot of different genres. There's a lot of different genres so far. We've had some noir stories, some kind of classic Japan historical books, uh, a modern Japan businessman story, and now we have a samurai story. So Samurai Legend also was released in Japan in 1992. This was story by Kan Furuyama with art by Taniguchi. So the synopsis for this book, from the pages of history comes the legend of the samurai Jubai and the book he was pledged to protect. Now the book has been stolen and Jubai must retrieve it before Japan descends into bloody civil war. A tale of blood, swords, and political intrigue. So this was released in English in 2003 by Central Park Media. This is a defunct, uh, no longer uh, uh, around publisher. And this is actually, I think, the only Central Park Media book that I have. And this retails for $15.95. This one, obviously, with them being no longer a publisher, this is long out of print, but this is still a very easily obtainable volume for cheap. I think I found this volume for like 10 or $12. So you should, you know, so out of print, you're not gonna buy this, find this new most places, but it is still easily available, uh, picked up, used. And as you can tell here, we have kind of a classic samurai story. And it does read in the right to left. And that is Samurai Legend. Okay, so next we have a journal of my father. This is another really nice Panet Mon hardcover. This was released in Japan in 1994. Um, this one is another one where it's story and art by Taniguchi. So the synopsis for this story, after well over a decade's absence, Yoichi Yamashita journeys back to his hometown to attend his father's funeral. As the relatives gather and the stories flow alongside the drinks, Yoichi's childhood starts to resurface. The spring afternoon playing on the floor of his father's barbershop, the fire that ravaged the city and his family home, his parents' divorce, and a new mother. Through confidences and memories shared with those who knew him best, Yoichi rediscovers the man he had long considered an absent and rather cold father. So this is one of the more recent releases by Ponet Mon. This was released in English in 2020. So this is actually the first uh, Taniguchi book that I bought. And again, we have some color pages at the start. And then this one has an afterword by Taniguchi. And like most of the Punnett Mon titles, this one is in print, still easily obtainable. I got my copy from Right Stuff, but it's available on the Punnett Mon's website. It's, you can get this on Amazon. Still a very, um, still an in print uh, book from Punnett Mon. Okay, so next up we have Ikaro. And this is a two volume series released in Japan in 1997. This is written by Mobius with art by Taniguchi. So the premise for this story, Ikaro is a young man blessed with a fantastic ability of flight, but his home, a top secret laboratory complex, is in reality a high-tech prison, and Ikaro is the guinea pig it was created to study. 
but in the staff of the laboratory is one person who rebels at the sinister plans for Ikaro. Yukiko is a young woman who is willing to risk her life to free the boy who has never known freedom. Ikaro's fight to be free and Yukiko's sacrifice to aid him in his quest makes this one of the most inspiring manga stories and one of the first significant original manga collaborations between East and West. So this was released in English in 2003 in this two volume set by a publisher called iBooks. So this is an adult story. So I'm going to try to turn it to some pages that are not inappropriate for the internet. There's that. And then this is book two. So two volume release. Like I said, this is cool that we have comics, uh, kind of legend Mobius mixed with Taniguchi. Um, I haven't heard the greatest things about this story, about this series, but it's cool to have. This is uh, long out of print also. I don't think iBooks is still around. So this one here is another one of the ones that goes for a decent price. You can usually find both volumes in between 80 to hundred dollars total. Um, so one of the harder to find uh, Taniguchi releases. Next up, we have A Distant Neighborhood. This was released in Japan in 1998. This is another one that is written and uh, drawn by Taniguchi. So the premise for this one, middle-aged Hiroshi Nakihara is on his way home from a business trip when he finds himself on the wrong train heading for his childhood hometown. His footstep takes him to his mother's grave and it is there that he has catapulted back into his life as an eighth grader, but with all his adult memories and knowledge intact. As he struggles to make sense of his predicament, his adult memories of his childhood return, but are somehow subtly changed. The questions start to form. Would his father still disappear without explanation? Would he still marry his wife? So this was released in English in 2016 by Panitmon. This one is left to right, so this one is flipped. Um, it looks like it's getting a paperback re-release on August 14th under the name Harukana Machi, A Distant Neighborhood. Not sure of any differences. Um, it looks like the same page count and the hardcover is still in stock at Punnett Mon, at Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Um, so this one's still in release. So this one's still readily available, but it looks like we're getting a new paperback re-release on 814. I'm gonna assume that re-release is, is gonna be the correct right to the left. That's usually how the newer uh, Punnett Mon books have gone, but uh, not 100% sure. And this is a really thick hardcover. This is probably almost double the size of The Walking Man. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, no afterword on this one. But again, we have some color pages. And that is A Distant Neighborhood. Okay, so next we have The Quest for the Missing Girl. This was released in Japan in 1999. Mountaineer Shiga made a promise to his best friend following his tragic death in the Himalayas. Now, 12 years later, he is called upon to honor that promise. When 15-year-old student Megumi fails to arrive home from school, her mother calls on her dead husband's best friend for help. Shiga abandons his mountain refuge and enters the city to look for the girl. And with the police investigation at a standstill, Shiga has to go at it alone. So this was released in English in 2008 by Planet Mon. This is a soft cover volume released in right to left. And this one is still in print. It's still available on Planet Mon's site, still easily available on other book retailers. So there is the quest for the missing girl. Next up, we have The Summit of the Gods. This is probably Taniguchi's most well-known work. This was released in Japan between 2000 to 2003, and it was released in five volumes. So this is an adaptation of a Yumi Makura Baku novel. So he is credited as the script, and then the art is by Taniguchi. This was made into a live action film, and then a recent animated movie uh, released on Netflix. So the premise of this story George Mallory attempted to climb Mount Everest in 1924 on an expedition from which he and his climbing partner Andrew Irvine never returned. 
Almost 70 years later in 1993, with Mallory's body still undiscovered, a Japanese expedition photographer, Makoto Fugamachi, stumbles across a 1920s camera in a Nepal bazaar, which sparks a whole series of questions with few answers. The Summit of the Gods is an epic story of man and his personal conquests against his own limitations. So this first volume was released in English in 2009, and the final volume was released in 2015. So 2009 to 2015, here's volume two, volume three, volume four, and volume five. And these are all paperbacks re released in the right to left format. And these are all still in print, still pretty easily available. Occasionally a volume will go out of stock. I've seen it write stuff, like maybe two or three volumes be in stock, um, but still fairly easily obtainable series. And next we have Skyhawk. This was released in Japan in 2002. Two defeated samurai are exiled from Japan during the Boshin War of 1868 as the new Meiji government took hold. Ending up in Crow territory in North America, they encounter Crazy Horse, chief of the Oglalas, and soon form a profound friendship and respect for each other's cultures. This respect was felt so deeply that the two Japanese travelers end up fighting alongside the Oglalas at the infamous encounter at Little Bighorn. So this was released in English in 2019, another release by Panet Mon. As you can start to see, Panet Mon is pretty much the definitive uh, publisher that releases his works in English. And this is another paperback in the right to left format. And this is another one that is fairly easily obtainable, still on stock at Ponit Mon's site. You can still find this new at most uh, book retailers. Next up, we have The Ice Wanderer and Other Stories. So the short stories in this book were released in Japan in between 1994 all the way up to 2004. So there's six stories in here. This, just like Skyhawk, is another release that has to do with uh, stories kind of based in North America. So, lost in the Great North, two men are saved by the appearance of an old hunter who divulges a strange legend to them. Surrounded by wolves and fighting for their survival, two explorers head for Alaska to bury their companion. A marine biologist begins a quest to find the mythical graveyard of whales. In total, six shorts with as many stories of men confronted by savage nature, which is sometimes cruel, sometimes forgiving, but always vast. Through tales filled with respect for animal life, this splendid collection, which lies at the crossroads, crossroads of poetry and adventure, shows master creator Taniguchi at his award-winning best. So this was released in English in 2010 by Planet Mon. And again, another soft cover, right to left. And it has in here when they when the individual stories were released. And again, another one that's pretty easily obtainable. I think it's still available on the Planet Mon site and easily obtainable at your book retailers. Okay, so next is uh, something a little different. This is a short story collection where only one of the stories featured uh, is has Taniguchi in it. So this is Japan as viewed by 17 creators. This was uh, created in 2005. This is a short story collection with 10 French comic creators and seven Japanese manga creators, both telling stories about visiting and living in Japan. So the Taniguchi story included is called Summer Sky, and this was released in English in 2007 by Panet Mon. So a lot of people, uh, especially if they're Taiyo Matsumoto collectors, will have this in their collection because this also has a Matsumoto story in here. It has a Moyoko Ano story in it, um, some other manga creators, but um, it also has a Taniguchi story. And it is a fairly short Taniguchi story, but if you're a collector, it is good to have it as part of your collection. So here it is, Summer Sky. And you can easily tell by the Taniguchi artwork. And this one, Punnet Mon, it is, uh, I think, still available on their website. It is still 
pretty available on Amazon and stuff like this. It is definitely a lesser known Taniguchi book just because it only has one story, but, uh, but yeah. So this is uh, Japan as viewed by 17 creators. Okay, so next we have A Zoo in Winter. This was released in Japan in 2008. Premises Kyoto 1966. The young Hamaguchi is working for a textile manufacturer while dreaming of becoming an artist when an incident at the zoo involving the boss's daughter forces his hand. He moves to Tokyo at the invitation of an old school friend who also arranges an interview at the studios of the famous mangaka Shiro Kondo. Here he quickly discovers both the long hours of meeting studio deadlines along with the nightlife and artistic haunts of the capital. For the first time ever, Multi-award winning Taniguchi recalls his beginnings in manga and his youth spent in Tokyo in the 60s. It is a magnificent account of his apprenticeship where all the finesse and elegance of the creator are united to illustrate those first emotions of adulthood. So this was released in English in 2011 by Planet Mon. This is another hardcover release and this one is flipped so it is left to right. And again, this one is, you know, an older Panamon release, um, but still readily available, not hard to find. Zoo in winter. Next up we have Ferrari, and this is uh, released in Japan in 2012. Uh, Taniguchi returns with this delightful and insightful tale of life in a Japan long forgotten. Inspired by historical figure Tadataka Ino, Taniguchi invites us to join this unnamed but appealing and picturesque figure as he strolls through the various districts of Edo. Now retired from business, he surveys, measures, draws, and takes notes while giving free rein to his taste for simple poetry and his, and his inexhaustible capacity for wonder. As he did in the times of Bachin with lead character the writer Soeski, Taniguchi slips easily into the heart and mind of this early cartographer and reveals his world to us in full graphic detail, so we may fully perceive and understand. So this was released in English in 2017 by Panetmon. This is a smaller hardcover than the other um, hardcovers they released, and this is in left to right format. And as you can see, yeah, we're getting back to historical Japan. And this is another one still in, still in stock, still readily available. Okay, now we have Guardians of the Louvre. And this, is, this was released in Japan in 2014. So this is the latest entry in the Louvre collection of graphic novels. After a group trip to Europe, a Japanese artist stops in Paris alone, intent on visiting the museums of the capital. But bedridden in his, in his hotel room with fever, he faces the absolute solitude of one suffering in a foreign land, deprived of any immediate or familiar recourse. When the fever breaks somewhat, he sets out on his visit and promptly gets lost in the crowded halls of the Louvre. Very soon, he discovers many unsuspected facets to this world, in a museum in a journey oscillating between feverish hallucination and reality, actually able to speak with famous painters from various periods of history, led to crossroads between human and personal history. So this was released in English in 2016 by Panetmon. This is an oversized, really giant hardcover. It is not that thick, but it is a very large size. And this one is still pretty easily available on Punnett Mont uh, site on Amazon. And this one is in full color. And right to left. We've got some background on the artists mentioned in the story. So that is Guardians of the Louvre. 
Okay, and the last release in English we have is Venice, and this was created in 2014, or released in 2014 in Japan. And so, when Louis Vuitton decided to produce a series of deluxe travel books for the new century, they invited only hand-picked artists from around the world and placed them in settings unfamiliar to the artist to bring this vision to life. For one of the world's most visited and romantic cities, Venice, they chose Taniguchi to glorify this magnificent city with his beautifully painted scenes. So in this travel journal, Taniguchi invites us to come and get lost in the streets and canals of Venice alongside his character. As he explores this floating city while trying to unravel some of old postcards, Taniguchi's beautiful illustrations make time stand still. We follow his every step, enjoying the serenity of his pages. So this was released in English in 2017 by Panatmon. Louis Vuitton actually has a special edition of this, which I think there are only like 50 copies that were released uh, only in their stores. And this is more of a art book kind of travelogue. There's not a lot of, um, of words in it. It's more of just, it is in full color. Um, it's more just kind of uh, a lot of drawings of Venice and the creator kind of exploring Venice. So it's a really nice release. It's in this kind of interesting sideways format. So it has a, slip, a dust jacket, some more artwork underneath. And so that is everything that has been released in English by Panetmon. Okay, and this next book, I'm gonna include, it's not really a Taniguchi book, but I felt like including it because he is mentioned on the title. And this is Tokyo is My Garden. This is a Panetmon release. As you can see here on the cover, it says with the collaboration of Taniguchi. So Taniguchi, um, from reading this, he did the gray tones in this book. So um, I picked it up. It's easily available for a cheap price. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's that's really the only the only thing that, that he did in this is the gray tones. So, I mean, I guess technically he did some art stuff on here, but this isn't generally considered a Taniguchi book. And this is Tokyo is My Garden. And so that is it for Taniguchi work. So we do have one pre-order coming up. We have Panetmon has a pre-order for the Solitary Gourmet, which is a hardcover release. It is gonna collect all 32 chapters created over two decades. So it's gonna collect stories from 1994 to 2015. And this is supposed to release in English in December, 2022. So the premise for this, it's about a independent traveler importing household and fashion goods from France. He is always busy, but never rushed as he travels around Japan selling his wares. He's a private person who, while he enjoys the company of women, prefers to remain a bachelor. He smokes, but never touches alcohol, but above all, he enjoys his food. He is the solitary gourmet. Each of the 32 chapters explores another dish in another restaurant in another part of town, from Tokyo to Tatori, from Osaka to the hospital, and even ventures to an Algerian restaurant in Paris, eating and observing. So that is, other than the paperback re-release of A Distant Neighborhood, uh, that is the only thing we have on the books for Taniguchi, is the Solitary Gourmet. Okay, so that was it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And like I mentioned before, please leave me uh, something in the comments to let me know your thoughts on this video. But, uh, but otherwise, uh, everyone have a great rest of your day, and thanks for watching.